Hey guys, Jerry Mitchellick here, and on this Gun Smarts video, I'd like to share with you guys my five top training drills that I use for competitions. We're going to start with some of the equipment, basic equipment that I train with. I've got the new Smith & Wesson Volunteer Rifle. And what I did, I tricked it out with the equipment that I like. Uh, it's got a Magpul buttstock that I really like and a pistol grip. And the one reason I like about the pistol grip here, it has a bit of a storage uh, compartment in it. I can put my Allen wrenches, uh, lens cloth, and anything I might need to prep on the line. Of course, a chamber flag. It's going to be mandatory that you have a flag in your rifle at all times unless you're not on the line shooting. So, I have a Vortex 1x6 razor optic on it also a razor red dot on the side and in open division i can have multiple optics and that's a really good thing i have a piece of m lock on the bottom here for bipods tripods or whatever a sling attachment also a mag pole and that's what's really nice about this m lock handguard it's so flexible in its application and it's 15 inches long so that really makes it useful in different shooting positions and i have a mitchellette compensator on the end and uh it's ready to ready to go just the way it is right here a good setup and moving on to safety equipment this is something you're going to have to have as a competitor you gonna have to have hearing protection i like a electronic hearing protection so i can set it up really loud and i always use a set of plugs i have disposable plugs or rubber plugs and the reason i want a double plug uh, there's a couple of reasons compensator is going to be very loud and also in a stage of fire it's very easy kind of give you a quick demo demonstration of what i'm talking about here on hearing protection if I had just muffs on, it doesn't matter whose manufacturer they are. If I compromise it with the buttstock in the stage and my ear is exposed to the gunfire, it's not a good thing. So with double protection, I'm always protected from hearing loss with, with uh, either plugs or the muffs themselves. And of course, ammunition, guys. This is, uh, this is chambered in 5.56, so you can safely shoot 223 in any 5.56 ammunition you find. And that's a big topic when you talk about ammo. Spend the extra bucks, buy some good ammo. Hornady is one of my sponsors. Their 55 ball round shoots just about a minute of angle, so it's good for as far as you want to shoot it. We usually shoot a 55 grain out to about 300 yards and then go to a 75 match after. And that's what I'll have my rifle set up is for two different ammunition. So when I go to a match, I'll determine when I do the course of fire, when I do a walkthrough, what ammo I'm going to use. Either it's going to be a 55 or a 75. And of course, you want to have a timer if you're, out if you're out training. It keeps track of what you are as a competitor and what level you can participate. And uh, you've got to have a timer. It keeps everything honest, keeps you honest when you train. And another thing I always have as part of a safety equipment is a lead wipe. You're going to be exposed to uh, carbon lead from just shooting itself. And if you pick up targets, they're going to have lead on the face of the target. So I usually wear gloves all the time on the range when I'm setting targets. And in between stages, just... Uh, Use a, use a lead wipe. Okay guys, before we start the rifle drills themselves, we're gonna talk about safe gun handling. It's gonna be a requirement for me to always have my equipment in a bag. A lot of ranges have that requirement. If you have a sanctioned match, it's really easy to go to their website and research what the safety requirements are. I'll always have mine in a bag like this, and it will always be flagged empty in the bag. So assume this is a safe area. I'm gonna unbag. Courtesy is, always keep it pointed toward a berm or straight up, muzzle up. But you see also I have a flag in it. That's gonna be mandatory just about every competition you go to. And the older I get, the more I appreciate a flag, guys. It's really good. Okay, so I have the gun out, it's flagged. Give you an idea when I do, a, when I actually load the rifle at a competition, I'll always have it pointed at a berm. Should something happen, it's gonna be in the berm. Go ahead and load, make it ready, muzzle up again, or have it placed in a safe area. Sometimes you'll have to stage your equipment. And I have some props here. And these are some of the props you'll see at a competition. For multi-gun, you'll have a drop drum like this, or you might have a tray. And so what you want to think about when you uh, say, my, my rifle is ready for the competition, and the RO is behind me, he's giving me the, the signal to go ahead and stage my equipment. I'm going to place it in there in a way that when I grab it, I'm going to use both hands. I'll usually reach in and grab the buttstock, and immediately I want to grab the pistol grip. And I want to know where my muzzle is at all times, keep it keep it within the 180 safety zone of that competition and then as soon as I bring it out of the drum I'm going to start driving it toward the targets so same thing on a tray like this it's actually a better visual where you can see 
you can see more of what's going on. So I'll come into it, grab the buttstock, get my hand on the pistol grip as soon as I can, finger out a trigger guard, of course, and I won't engage the safety until I have a target that I need to engage. And uh, there it is, guys, safe gun handling. Uh, it's your responsibility, nothing to it. Okay guys, this is rifle drill number one. It's first shots. Uh, we're going to kind of give you some detail on what I try to do and what I try to see. It's a driving game with your left hand. Not only are you holding the rifle, but you have to drive it into the center of the target. So we want to make that as easy and as repeatable as possible. So the first drill, this is the most common position you might find at a three gun competition. Is The buttstock is going to be on your shoulder. You're going to be fully loaded. And your muzzle is going to be aiming at either something on the ground that will have a designated start position or it's just going to be at the low ready. So from that, I'm going to give you an idea of what you want to do as a competitor to make this repeatable and easy and simple. I want this platform lined up directly with the center of the target. And then I get right behind it like this. All I have to do is address my left hand and come straight into the target. Key thing here, do not activate the safety until it's parallel to the ground and start your trigger prep. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go hot on it. All right, let's load her up. This is a vision skill game also. You want both eyes open as much as you possibly can. If you want to ride the optic coming into the target, looking through there, you can. But you'll find as you get faster, you won't need to do that. I'm watching and I'm driving. As soon as that timer goes off, I'm seeing that rifle come into the zone, flip the safety and make the shot. Here we go. Very simple. Keep it simple. Keep it in line. Next thought position you might encounter is going to be port arms. Buttstock's going to need to touch the belt. And what I usually try to do on the muzzle is make it about eye level. And the reason for that is I want to know where, exactly where the end of that gun is. I'm going to have it exactly in the center of that target. It's going to be lined up directly in the center, touching my belt. So when I go to shoot, all I have to do is bring the buttstock and make the shot. Bring the buttstock up to the shoulder. Same thing on the safety. Leave the safety engaged until it's parallel to the ground and make the shot. Very hard to mess that up. You're right in line with the target. You see a lot of guys starting left to right of the target and that adds a lot of motion that doesn't accomplish anything. Keep it simple. Third position. This is something that just started to show up in the three gun game here recently. Butt stock on the belt. The gun is going to be parallel to the ground. What I try to do is get the butt stock a little bit more forward. If it's behind you like this, you got to do all this motion to bring it into the target. I don't want that to happen. I want to work a little smarter, have it out in front a little bit. There again, the gun is exactly in line with the target. So all I have to do is bring it up. And as I'm bringing it up right here, I'll flip the safety and make the shot. Go ahead and do it. Here we go. So there you have it, guys. If you keep it simple, keep it safe, finger out a trigger guard, activate the safety when you're parallel to the ground, very easy to repeat, and you'll have a good day. Okay, rifle drill number two is going to be rapid fire, guys. This is something I've spent a lifetime trying to perfect. What you want to find yourself doing on the range when you do a rapid fire drill is something repeatable. It's very easy to overpower, overpower the platform that you have in your hand. So this is like a calibration check for me and it goes to any, anything that I shoot, rifle, pistol, shotgun. So on a rifle, I find that most people hold it too hard. They try to hold it in that shoulder too much and they give them a very erratic pattern. So when I'm shooting fast, what I'm trying to see in the scope of the red dot is a repeatable pattern per, per shot. Try to keep it as tidy as you can, but something repeatable. My left hand is going to be parallel to the ground. I got an empty chamber and I'm, and I'm flagged. So it's going to look something like this. And pretty much my technique is if I can hold it up with my left hand, that's about all I need to hold to the rear. And then grab it, lock this wrist like you would a pistol. Smooth on the trigger. Let's go ahead and give it a run. See what it looks like. All right. I'm going to fire six rounds, and that's usually enough rapid fire for me to get a good calibration for what I have in my hands here. So 
Let's go ahead and do that from the low ready. Buttstock on the shoulder. Those are all in the middle. So I'm pretty happy with what I'm feeling. You might notice my left hand, I'm actually pointing my finger toward the target. And I'm trying to get a feel for what the gun is giving me per shot and adjust to it. You notice my nose is on my toe here. I've got enough weight forward to control it. Let's go, just to bring it a little bit faster. <laughs> I should be talking. I should be shooting. Here we go, let's go a little faster. Yeah. So, something to look for. Repeatability, how much pressure you have on your shoulder, how you lock your wrist on your, on your firing hand, and also hand position on the hand guard. It's gonna be very important. The longer you have your, the further your hands are apart, the more control, the closer your hand is, the less control. So somewhere in that is gonna be a sweet spot, and that's gonna be you. Get some. Okay, guys, this is really a fun one. It's called Close to Far. What I really like about this drill, it makes you really snappy to stay in step. It also uses your vision, and you have to be a, pay a lot of attention on vision skills here, but also the mechanics. I'll kind of give you an idea of the mechanics that I use for this. These targets are relatively close together. There's three of them. So I'm going to stand center on the, on the middle one, and on the timer, I'm going to come up and shoot the far target twice, shoot the left one twice, go back to the center twice, and back to the right twice, and back to the center. So it's going to be 10 shots. You want your optic set to a position where you can see as much as possible. So I'm going to shoot this optic at one power, keep both eyes open, because I have to know where I'm going. As soon as I finish a target requirement, I'm going to snap to the next target. And this is a driving skill game to where I want to interact with the targets on a flat horizon. You want to transition flat to the horizon here, so your left hand position is going to be critical. You're going to use your left hand a lot to start and stop. Your support hand, if your right hand, is going to be left. So let's go ahead and run it a couple times, give you an idea what it looks like. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Got carried away a little bit. <laughs> I was having fun. I think I shot 12. But anyway, <laughs> the idea on this drill is to keep yourself parallel to the ride. And so technique, you're working on your knees. You always want to have both eyes open. You want to see always more than one target. Let's go ahead and run it a couple of times. Here we go. Let's do one more. Pivot on your knees. Here we go. a lot of fun guys you can dry fire this this skills game also uh, but getting out and actually burning ammo is a lot of fun get some <laughs> hey guys this is drill number four shooting on the move this is going to probably have the most change in technique one thing I do I bring the rifle closer to my face I'm trying to get it centered my body with the center of mass of the, of the platform I have in front of me so I get it off my shoulder bring it in a little bit more I want to get a little bit lower to the ground. I'm going to have my feet spread a little bit wider than I would naturally. But the big thing for me when I'm shooting on the move is that I want to roll my foot to the ground. I never want to come into the ground with my foot flapping on the ground. You can't have a flap, guys. you got to have a roll. So you want to lock your shin a little bit, keep your toes up a little bit longer, stay on your heel a little bit longer. Rifle, same thing. What's the big difference here is when you do transitions like you would standing static i can rotate on my knees here i cannot so i have to use my upper body even even more and that's why it's more important to have the gun in the center of your body so when you go transitions left to right kind of give you an idea how to practice at home this is one drill that you can dry fire and learn a lot small changes in technique here are huge so if you find yourself getting to a point to where you're not advancing go back to basics and just go back through the steps so this is an old, uh, an old training thing we did back in the pistol days. Uh, it, could, it can work for any, any platform, rifle, pistol, shotgun, whatever. So put this cup of water out in front of you and do your duck walk and see how far and how fast you can move and how stable it is. And that kind of gives you an idea how hard you are on your feet. It's a really fun drill to learn. You have to have it in action shooting. You got to get to the end faster than the other guy. It's a lot of fun.
On this course of fire, we're going to be using paper targets. And what you want to be aware of when you go to a competition is what the uh, shot requirement is on the target to satisfy for that score. On this target, it has an A box. What we're going to do is one, one alpha or two anywhere on the paper will satisfy the course requirement. So usually what guys will do, they'll go two shots anywhere. It's a lot quicker than trying to aim and put it in the middle. But there are all matches that you go to where they score each individual shot and the scoring zones represent the point value per shot. So just be aware of that. Pretty simple stage. What we're going to do here as a competitor, we're going to start low ready, uh, mounted on the shoulder, muzzle toward the ground on the timer. We're going to come up and we're going to start moving. That's one thing about multi-gun or three-gun. Course requirement might be that I move one yard, maybe static and never move at all, or 10 yards, maybe even 100 yards. So your ability to satisfy the course requirement per target while you're moving is very high. If you can move and shoot, that's what you want to do. You got to get to another point, engage another target, and satisfy the course requirement. So we're going to start muzzle down like this. And on the timer, I'm going to shoot paper target on the left twice on the move one on the right twice, transition over to my right while I'm, I'm going to try to keep my feet in motion. Uh, movement is always good, you're saving time. I'm going to shoot the target on the right, target on the left, and this final target, there's not a fault line for me to stop at, so I'm going to shoot it at least twice on the move as fast as I can to finish the shot requirement and stop the timer as fast as I can. So it's all about movement, keeping your feet feet and play and the gun as level as you can to the targets and, and satisfy the target requirement as fast as you can. All right, we're going on drill number five and this is uh, awareness of point of aim, point of impact. It's going to be very important that you understand where this thing is looking at every distance that you might have to engage a target. So give me an idea on a modern sporting rifle, one of the features that makes it so easy to shoot, it's a straight line stock. So the recoil goes right into your shoulder, doesn't have a pivot point. The disadvantage is, is how high your optic has to be to allow you to actually get on this stock. So you want to be aware from the center line of that optic to the center line of that bore is about two and three quarter inches. So in competition, you see targets set up like this where the target zones might be narrow, but they're very close. And what they want you to do here, it's, I call it a sucker punch target. They want you to aim dead on just like that target would be at 100 yards. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that for you. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull the flag out. And I'm gonna pretend these target zones are at 100 yards. And I'm gonna aim dead in the middle of them, each target zone, and give them two shots off the timer. And then we'll take a look at the target. Here we go. All right. Take a zoom down there and take a look at that target. Okay, we're downrange here. We're relatively close. I don't think that was about six, seven yards. Uh, my optic is sized for 200. That's, that's my usual point of aim, point of impact. But being that the bore is some two and three quarter inches under the center of the scope, it really doesn't matter if I'm sighted at 100 or 200. You can have that much offset at that distance. And that's why I call this the sucker punch target because it wants me to aim at the middle. Instinctively, you, you aim at the middle of the target zone and this darkened area of the target is considered hard cover, which is not uh, engageable. It's a lost shot. So I actually have two shots here that are lost, and also this one's a non-scoring target. So I only have two hits, no, one hit out of four shots. So what I'm seeing, and what made this wrong on the first attempt, was if you look at the bore, I'm going to put the bore right in the center of these two shots, and you see how high the scope is? Optically, I'm right here in the center, but the bore line is right there, so the bullets went right where they were supposed to go. I didn't address the problem that it was close, and I had to do a holdover of some two and a half inches. So I'm going to reshoot it again, and I'm going to do the correct holdover, and we're going to take a look at the target. Okay, one thing you want to remember, guys, there's no way I can have this scope set for this distance and 200 yards at the same time. So you just have to learn your holdovers from one foot out to 600 yards. So I'm going to hold over about two inches on each target presentation here, and let's see what that looks like. All right, let's go down there and take a look. Okay, if you look at the target zones, uh, both of them have two, uh, two shots in them, so I've satisfied the target requirement. I had to aim a little bit higher than I did previous. I had to do about a two and a half inch holdover on the top zone, same thing in the middle. So we've got this target uh, 
we got this target completed, but there's something else I want to show you. The other thing you want to be aware of when you're shooting targets is where that muzzle is. Say this was my uh, a position I need to shoot over. It's very easy for me to come here and I have a sight picture downrange, but if you look at the end of my muzzle, it's actually, it's just going to impact an object. So this object could be cardboard, could be a prop, could be, could be anything. So what I like to do, if I'm coming up to a wall like this, I'm going to actually shoot over it, use that handguard. And that's what's really good about a long handguard. It'll keep you from having a, uh, an issue with it totally. So it's very common to see through the optic and the bore is not seeing the target. I'll demonstrate that for you again and I'll actually fire a shot to give you an idea what that looks like. So I can see a target down range and my barrel is obstructed and I pull the trigger. Things like this happen. It can, it can make that bullet go astray. You're gonna miss the target. I see a lot of guys get hung up on soft cover like this and they keep firing and keep firing. And if you made a few shots and something is not right, change the position, use your hand, go and get back on top and finish the target array. Offset, you gotta always have offset on your mind, no problem. Hey guys, there you have it, my five top drills for the modern sporting rifle and competition. And what you wanna realize, you can take these drills to whatever you like. The idea is to go out and have fun and always be safe and uh, always get some. Thank you.